Hi students, welcome to Mrs. Sebastian's studio again. Today we have a really fun project inspired by the artist Wayne Tebow. We're going to be making an inspired artwork from his um, for our project for today. And then I have a read aloud at the end from one of my favorite books that's also tied to our subject. So I hope you'll stay tuned and listen to that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and learn about some Wayne Tebow. Today we're going to be learning about Wayne Tebow and his cake series. I love this quote of his down at the bottom. When I painted the first row of pies, I can remember sitting and laughing. Sort of a silly relief. Now I have flipped out. I did one pie and thought, that's really crazy. No one is going to look at these things anyway. So what the heck? I mean, what a great attitude just to go in and be yourself and express yourself freely without caring what anyone else says. Your objectives for today are appreciate the art of Wayne Tebow, understand how Wayne's art fits into the pop art movement, and then you're going to be drawing using a cylinder shape and themes to create your own original cake by adding lots of great details. Give you a little more information about Wayne. Wayne Tebow is an American painter born in 1920 in Arizona. Um, so Arizona is right next to the state of California where his parents brought him to when he was six months of age. Um, the little arrow there points to where California is. It's on the opposite coast of where Florida is. And he's born in 1920. How old does it make him in the year 2020? Well, his birthday isn't until November, so he is 99 years old as of today. When he grew up, he joined the Air Force and he served in the military from 1942 to 1946. And because he was able to serve in the military during that time, he was, um, when he retired from the military, he was able to get a college education using the GI Bill. He received a teaching appointment at Sacramento Junior College in 1951 um, while he was still a graduate in school in California. He remained there for eight years, after which he joined the University of California as an art professor. He actually still taught at least one class until a few years ago in 2017. Um, he did retire from teaching at that point because, golly gee, when you're 96... You know, it's probably time to call it quits and maybe just focus a little more on your art. Um, Thibaut spent uh, 10 years working in New York, actually, in addition, and in Hollywood as a cartoonist and advertisement designer. The teenage Thibaut established himself as a cartoonist, working for a brief time as an animator for Walt Disney Studios. As a young man in Long Beach, he worked at a cafe named named Mile High and Red Hot. Can you guess what was Mile High? Well, the ice creams were, and the Red Hots were hot dogs. So how does his work fit into the pop art style? If you thought everyday objects, bringing things that people see, um, if not daily, at least often in their lives, being ice cream and hot dogs and other food items, then check, you would be absolutely correct. For Wayne Tebow, it all starts off with a drawing. And you can see here, he did some quick little thumbnail sketches, trying to figure out what his next painting would be. He did confections, including Sundays. He did gumball machines. Of course, he did these cakes here. And of course, really cakes and pies are his claim to fame. Here's a, um, a dessert case filled with suckers and sweets. Notice the horizontal lines in the picture kind of adds a little bit of unity in breaking up the space into thirds. So the top part's one third, the middle part's another third, and the bottom of the case where it's black is going to be the last third. How many different suites can you identify in this picture? There is a lot there. All right, so when we look at this early kind of a painting from him, his cakes are actually cylinders. So when you look at the cylinder shape, 
Um, it's going to have, of course, a flat top, but then the sides are curved. So how do we show that cake in space? Usually it's going to be with an oval, a couple of straight lines, and a curve at the bottom. Notice here, what colors did he use for his shadows? Um, at the bottom, the shadows on the counter where the cakes are propped up on sticks, you can see that it's actually kind of a bluish color. Um, a lot of shadows, when you look at them, are not straight black or gray. They have a little bit of a tint depending upon where the sun is up in the sky as well. And even the cakes themselves, depending upon where the light's hitting them, it'll be lighter, like a tint of a color, and where it's more shadowy, it'll have more of those cool colors in it. How, would his picture look as real if he didn't have his shadows on the display case or around the cylinders include it? I think not. Here's another one of his. Love the reflections on this one. Now he did do other things because artists after all love to explore and challenge themselves. So here is his apartment view. Couldn't escape the food there. He's got a dinner plate. Um, and then intersection. And so when he's living in California, there are a lot of hilly places. I'm thinking more like San Francisco. If you've ever been there, they have a lot of those hills. Things that you'll need for this project include a piece of paper or two, a pencil, and some colored pencils. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like Wayne Tebow and I'm gonna draw out some sketches and then decide on which one I want to do. So the first thing I wanna think about is the form of it. Is it going to be a single, uh, single uh, layer cake? Is it gonna have multiple ones? Hmm, am I going to stack my cakes one on top of the other? Kind of doing those ovals as it comes down. Because that's going to really help to determine, um, you know, uh, which direction I'm going to turn my paper. For a cake like this one, I would need for my paper to be more vertical. But for one like this, it might be more horizontal. And of course I can put things on here. Um, you know, uh, so sometimes when you get a birthday cake, you may have objects that could appear on top. So that is something to kind of think about as well. Um, so maybe my cake might even have a slice taken out of it. So I could do like this, and then I would erase this part. And then I could see what flavor cakes I might have. So there might even be like a layer in here where you may have some icing in the middle. If I did a cake like this one, where it was like this and I had the cake coming out like this, the, the slice, then I would need to bring this in, this in, and bring this down. That's gonna give it that 3D kind of a look. And then I'm going to add the plate that it's going to sit on maybe. Yeah, I kind of like this one. I think that's the one I'm gonna do for my picture. Keeping that off to the side so I can refer back to it. I know now that I'm going to need to do a big oval. Try to make it fit your paper as best you can. We're gonna bring this down. We're gonna curve this, so it's real important to match the curve that's here with the curve down there. That really helps to give it that cylinder kind of a look. Draw lightly at first, because it certainly is a lot easier to erase when you have your lines very light. And then I'm gonna mark right about where the middle is, and I'm gonna bring my cut piece over here. If you had room, you could maybe even do a triangular prism over here of that cut piece. You know, this is just me kind of improvising here. So maybe I could do this kind of parallelogram shape and then bring that over. And maybe that'll be my cut slice that's on the side here. And then remember we said we had to make this arrow here the same at the bottom. And 
then draw the line straight down. Do my erasing there. And then do my erasing down here. And maybe all of this will be on one big platter. So I'm going to make it an oval because when you look at a circle in depth, it has that um, kind of uh, oval kind of a look to it. And I will show you what I'm talking about right now because the same kind of a rule applies for the top of our cylinder. So here I've brought a CD in and you can see that it is a circle, but look what happens when I start to tilt it to the side. You can see that that circle becomes more of an oval even the one in the middle does too. Our next plan is to think about um, what kind of cake we're gonna have. If, if it's a triple layer cake with different icings in the middle, then I can put those cream, those where you would put the, um, the icing in between the layers of cake. And so, I would make sure that I would include those layers here as well. So um, is your cake going to be chocolate, strawberry, vanilla? You decide how you want that to be. I think I have to go back and change this just a little bit. And that's great because um, art is really all about revising what you've done and looking and seeing how it can be improved even more. And I didn't think those arrows for the icing quite matched up right with the arrows that we have down here. So I'm just gonna go back and modify those because those little changes will help it look more 3D at the end of the day. All right, so now um, let's say I've decided I'm going to have some delicious chocolate here in the middle. Um, I do wanna be thinking about what my theme is going to be in here. So if you've had a lesson on themes with me before, maybe in the classroom, a theme is a reoccurring idea. These things are repeated over and over in artworks. They could be a melody repeated over and over in music, like with Philip Glass's music, um, or even in literature, like there's lots of good versus evil in books, um, like the Harry Potter series, or even in movies with Star Wars. Um, so I'm gonna just be thinking about that as I start to color in my delicious chocolate cake. And I also wanna be thinking about, is there a place where there's gonna be light hitting my cake? If the light is coming from this part of the picture, I might wanna let this part be a little darker because it's gonna be more in shadow than the, this side of the cake because it's gonna be hitting that light as the light's coming through this way. So be thinking about those shadows as you're doing your coloring as well. Um, and we can even go back and add some of those cool colors to our picture as well as we work. I like to color in the same direction. Um, as I color and sometimes I'll go back and forth with a cross hatch that kind of hits a lot of those areas that I may have missed before and then I have to also do my cake but my cakes hitting the light a little bit so I'm gonna just make these all that lighter shade of brown there are so many delicious chocolate flavors there's German there's dark, there's Dutch. Um, gosh, making me hungry and making me want to make a cake for sure. And there's a lot of great recipes out there. Or you can just buy the one in the box from the grocery store. <clears throat> All right, so I think um, maybe my icing on the inside is going to be uh, yellow. So I'm gonna very Gonna hit this side a little darker and then we're gonna go here and then I'm just gonna go here and I've been thinking about my theme while I've been doing this so my theme I think is going to be 
Halloween. Oh, but you can pick a favorite holiday. You can pick a favorite um, TV show or cartoon that you watch. And you can by all means include that. I am going to write the words um, happy and then Halloween here. Uh, so I'm going to make them kind of fancy. And oh no, I missed some of the lettering here because it's been cut out. So it would be L L O W E E N. And I kind of don't like the way happy centered. I'm going to go back and change that. I think that's better. And then I want to put some things up here at the top that make me think of Halloween. So um, maybe I'll put a big pumpkin, jack-o'-lantern, maybe I'll put a um, kitty cat, like a black cat. Um, and then maybe I'll put some uh, little ghost like confetti on here maybe or even some little bats um, and then I'm gonna start to also think about the sides so as I decorate the sides of my cake I want to kind of keep that curve as I do it so if I put things like if I do a little swag here yeah Let's see if we can continue this all the way around. Yay. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. And then maybe I'll put my little bats. Simplified little bat shape. And I'm gonna keep those on the curve as I draw them. black roses um, and then down here at the bottom uh, we might just have uh, maybe we'll just do a little design here like that icing would have been piped on there at the very bottom and you can even decorate the plate that it's sitting on as well so let's get that plate drawn in just the way we like it Gotta make sure I leave some room for that other slice that's there. And maybe this is on a, a cake stand, so I put a little line down here at the bottom. Okay, now I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna to start to color in. I might decide to go back and you know, I think I will. I think I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna do a little spider web design here. You wouldn't see it because that cake's covering it up. Maybe I need to center that a little better. All right, so um, now I'm gonna go ahead and start to color it in.
some of those uh, other colors like blues or purples. Those are going to add a lot of those cooler notes to it. And it's going to just kind of blend over what I already have. Maybe it's a little darker over here. you can always make it darker too by adding more of the same color on there by intensifying that color it also gives it a more shadowy appearance I think I'm done. Today, students, I have one of my all-time favorite picture books. It's called The Bake Shop Ghost. It's written by Jacqueline K. Ogburn, and it is illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. And it is a great story um, and one of my favorite things about it is that it's also a mystery. So you're going to find out what the mystery is about it um, in just a few minutes once we get into the story. <clears throat> so, Miss Coralie Merriweather ran the best bake shop in these parts, maybe even in the whole state. The chocolate in her Mississippi mud pie was darker than the devil's own heart. Her sponge cake was so light, the angels kept hoping it would float up to heaven. And no birthday was complete without a Merryweather layer cake with her special buttercream frosting. Coralie must have poured all her sweetness into her work because there wasn't much sweet about her looks. She had a lemon pucker mouth and her hair was scraped back into a little hard bun. Most folks hardly noticed her looks, though. She was seldom seen anywhere except behind the bake shop counter. Few looked up from the glass-fronted cases filled with fluffy meringue pies, glistening fruit tarts, flaky strudels, and most of all, cakes. Layer cakes, sheet cakes, cakes with glazes, cakes with fillings, cakes with frosting finer than Irish lace, chocolate cakes, white cakes, tiny pedophores, and towering wedding cakes. When Coralie died, the whole town turned out for the funeral. No one cried until the preacher read out the big shop menu, and everyone realized that all those luscious desserts were now only sweet memories. Coralie didn't have any family, so the Merryweather Bake Shop was sold. Gertrude Stein was the first buyer. She made a fine strudel and good cakes, although not quite up to Merryweather standards. A baker's day begins soon after midnight, so the cases are filled with fresh goods. Her first night in the shop, Gerda had trouble with the ovens. Everything came out scorched. Ah, these old ovens. They're as cranky as Coralie, Gerda muttered. The next night, the refrigerator was broken. The milk and the butter had spoiled. Gerda was scrubbing up the mess when she heard footsteps in the upstairs apartment where Coralie used to live. She listened nervously for a moment but the footsteps stopped, so she went back to her cleaning. Something clanked behind her, though. Slowly, Gerda turned around. A misty figure 
with hair pulled back and a hard little bun glared at Gerda and then shrieked, Get out of my kitchen! Gerda got. The for sale sign was back in the window that afternoon. Coraline Merriweather is haunting this place, Gerda told everyone. Annie Washington had been the pastry chef on a cruise ship. She fell in love with the shop the minute she stepped in the door. Just what I want, a kitchen that doesn't rock up and down. She even liked the upstairs apartment. A bucket of bleach, some cans of paint, and I'll have this place ship shape in no time, Annie said. She scrubbed and polished and washed and waxed and primed and painted. The ovens gleamed and the cases sparkled. She unpacked her equipment, her mixing bowls, cake molds, and recipe books. I wonder what kind of cake she'll make for Coralie, one that will fill her up and bring tears to her eyes. If you think you know what it is, keep it to yourself to the end and see if you're right. At the stroke of midnight, Coralie appeared in the kitchen. For the first time in years, the shop was buttery and warm with the scent of fresh baking. Please be my guest, Annie said, motioning to a place setting a fine china and silver. Coralie sat, shook out the linen napkin, and placed it in her lap. Annie uncovered the first offering a tiramisu covered with whipped cream and sprinkled with cocoa. She carefully cut a slice, adding a sprig of mint on the side. Coralie gave a small nod of approval and took a small bite. Hmm, the cheese is a bit bland, the ghost said. Annie took a small slice for herself as Coralie finished off the cake. Annie decided Coralie was right about the cheese. I'll bet you never had a moon cake before. Annie said as she lifted the next cover, an entire Chinese Olympic diving team cried when they tasted this cake. It's made with red bean paste. Coralie took a half moon bite. Can't say that I've ever tasted one before, but this doesn't bring tears to my eyes. Still, she ate the rest. Annie presented cake after cake, and Coralie devoured them all. She showed no sign of being full and her eyes hardly blinked, much less shed a tear. At sunrise, Coralie said, You're a good baker, Miss Washington, but I'll not leave until you've baked me a cake to fill me up and bring tears to my eyes. A cake like one that I might have baked, but that no one ever made for me. And so it went. Annie made every kind of cake she knew. She made white cake, chocolate cake, fruit cake, spice cake, cheesecake, carrot cake, cake with nuts, cake with candy, cake from Asia, cake from Argentina, cakes from Vienna, Paris, and Rome. She made torts and tarts and babkas and bunts and pound cake and pan forte. Each time, Coralie would sample the offering and remark on its quality before finishing it. Annie came to respect the ghost judgment. Sometimes Coralie would help out a bit as Annie worked. Still, Annie began to fear that she would be stuck forever making cakes for the hungry ghost. After a month and hundreds of cakes, Annie had run out of recipes. She went to the library looking for inspiration. In a slim volume of town history, she found a section on Coralie and the Merryweather Bake Shop. When she had finished reading, she knew exactly what kind of cake to bake. At midnight, as she had for the past month, Coralie appeared in the kitchen. Her place was set with china and silver, but there was just one covered cake on the counter. Well, have you made me my cake? asked Coralie. Yes, Miss Merriweather, I believe I have, Annie replied. She lifted up the cover and tilted the cake towards the ghost. Across the top and piped icing it red. 
Happy birthday, Coralie. The ghost looked up at Annie, her eyes brimming. How'd you know? I found out that today is your 100th birthday. And you grew up an orphan, said Annie. Besides, whoever makes a cake for the baker? <sighs> With her finest knife, Annie cut a slice of the chocolate layer cake with buttercream frosting and served it to Coralie. Coralie ate her slice, tears trickling down her cheeks. When Annie offered another piece, the ghost said, I do believe I'm full. The two bakers sat quietly for a moment. Cora Lee rose into the air. It's your kitchen now. I'll keep our bargain and leave you in peace. Wait, said Annie. I'd like to show you the new menu. She handed Cora Lee a menu card and the top line read, Washington and Merriweather Bake Shop. Cora Lee's lemon pucker mouth broke into a huge smile. What do you say, asked Annie. Hmm, said Coralie. Since I'm the senior partner, it should be Merriweather in Washington. Oh, no. This is my kitchen now, you sly old ghost, said Annie. Now, Washington and Merriweather Bake Shop is busier than ever. The old folks say the cakes are almost as good as Coralie's. Of course, they don't know that she still bakes many of them. And every year, the shop's finest, most luscious, most beautiful birthday cakes are the ones that Cora Lee and Annie bake for each other. The end.